All right, folks, uh, George Kovach here in uh, Nick Sowers. Uh, we're in our resuscitation room. We're in here for a reason. Uh, um, there's been a couple of tweets and, and some interest, increasing interest in how we perform the, the awake intubation um, and have the patient tolerated. What I'm going to attempt to do is to uh, do an awake flexible, not just to look at the airway, but actually to get down to um, into my trachea and down to uh, the carina. Uh, whether it's going to be successful or not, I don't know. But the principles will be the same whether you're going to do it with direct laryngoscopy, whether you're going to do it with video laryngoscopy. So let's look at the tools of the trade that we're going to use. We're using Easy Spray. Come on up here and uh, take a look here. So this is uh, an atomizer, a nice disposable atomizer. It comes in a smaller volume one of only 20 cc's. doesn't really matter. Um, but you're going to hook it up to your source. In this case, we have it hooked up to medical air. Nice thing about it, it has a directional tip. And then when it's on, um, I can sort of, uh, I can squeeze this uh, to the, the area that I intend to uh, anesthetize. This is an atomizer, so particles are going to rain out. Uh, the, the particle size is going to such that it's going to rain out in the uh, upper airway and not end up down in the lower airway. I'm going to use probably about 10 cc's of this. This is 4% lidocaine, so 10 cc's of 4% lidocaine on me. The, the next one, which is the, the, the even the more critical one, is to use a 5% ointment. Okay, and this is the 5% ointment. Not a 2% gel, but a 5% ointment. And you can use about three or four centimeters of this in two applications to get the most sensitive area. And the most sensitive area when you're having this done to you is the posterior aspect of the tongue um, where you're gonna either have uh, the, the pressure of the scope there or you're gonna have the pressure of the blade there. So this is done um, very directed manner um, with a couple of applications on a, a tongue depressor. So this is how much we, we use um, roughly uh, to do it we're going to sort of move it all up to the front um, as a sort of a lollipop kind of thing here not a very tasty lollipop so this will be the, the first application that, that we'll, we'll use so these are the, the tools of the trade other things can be used but we want to make it as simple and simple and as effective as possible and that's and you obviously have to have a degree of cooperation and uh, um, so that's going to select your patient population, but we can often make them cooperative, uh, you know, either by talking to them, explaining what's going on, or, or more commonly by giving them medication. The most common medication we would give is ketamine. Now I'm on shift, so I'm, I'm not going to do ketamine, unfortunately, today, and you're just going to get the topical approach. So what you'd have to do is get the, the tongue out, and sometimes I'll trap the tongue with a gauze, um, but apply it as posterior as you can and sort of move it back and forth, okay? So here we go. All right, so I'm not gonna necessarily do it all at once, so here's one application, and again, I'm just holding it against the posterior tongue. You have to be patient and let this work. So I've still got this left to do, and I'm not gonna finish until uh, this is done. So I'm gonna go back, and what you'll feel is it's sort of melting and, and moving down to that posterior aspect of the tongue. So you have to be back far enough that it's got a downhill slope um, to that sensitive area. So I'm gonna apply it again. Almost there. One more. Okay. Now, at this stage, you could go with your second application, but we're going to give that part a break. And now, what we're going to do is topicalize um, with the uh, with the atomizer. So I've got to topicalize everything in the oropharynx that that I can get gain access to. 
and, um, and, and beyond. So I'll start with this. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do is start with this and we'll, we'll move it up to about 8 liters per minute. Um, and as you'll see here with 8 liters per minute, you'll see that uh, atomized spray. So what I'm going to do is target just uh, my, my tonsil, tonsils, peritonsillaries and posterior pharynx to begin with, okay? Um, as I breathe in, ready? And then stop. Apply it to the posterior tongue by bending this down, okay, and directing it there. And it's not so bad, it doesn't feel, taste that bad at this point. The 5% uh, does taste kind of bad um, at this point. We'll do a little bit more. Roughly you're going to end up doing this three times, but I'm going to use the entire volume in there, which is about 10 mils. And the last thing I'm going to do at this point is I'm, I'm actually going to, going to bend this down and I'm going to take a good breath in and then I'm going to try to get down around the periglottic region. The reason why I'm doing this first is because I'm eventually going to go into the nose to try to get the uh, um, the uh, periglottic region, and I don't want to go from nose to in mouth. Okay, um, so I think the rest of this I'm going to go with uh, through the nose. So check to see which nares is patent. Okay, and then we're going to go as I come in through the nose. So. Just for fun, I'm going to use the other side because it's jello. Alright, so I've used about 8 cc's. And I'm not convinced that I have the, uh, the lower portion of my airway done, so I'm not going to touch anything. You really won't be grossed out by this, but I'm going to try to point this down, not touch anything, and get just my airway with the remainder portion. And I'm going to trap my own tongue. Okay, we're going to see how that goes. Now, you have to be very cognizant of the fact when, when your upper airway gets anesthetized, some people will get very anxious in terms of they, they don't feel as if they can have a coordinated breath. Um, but uh, I don't feel that way so far, which makes me nervous that I'm not topicalized enough. But I'm going to go with a little bit at the end of the tongue, right? That's the really gag sensitive area. And then we should be ready to go. <laughs> we'll see. Got an appropriate little cough going. <laughs> I can tell it's working because I can't feel anything when I'm this right now so we're good at least that part Nick I'm gonna get you to set up a scope for me <coughs> still have my reflexes intact <coughs> Ha, 
<clears throat> so, some people like going through the nose. I prefer to go through the mouth if I'm going to intubate a patient. It can be a bit of a challenge, but I think if you get used to it, you're okay. The key thing is you have to keep midline, mid so I'm going to get you to try to sort of capture it so you get both meat and the, uh, the scope. And I might have to abandon this and get Nick to do this for me. Um, but it, just because it seems fun to do, I'm going to give this a go. Nick's got all the airway. Your airway card is my airway card is all um, prepped and ready for me. Hopefully we're not going to need it. Not bad. Um, just me, you, and my Corina. Hi, just a quick follow-up video. Um, my voice is a little bit hoarse, and uh, about 20 minutes later, the uh, anesthetic's wearing off, and I can feel that something happened there, but it, in no way is it uncomfortable, and I'm looking forward to having a, a good lunch soon. So. Don't try this at home. Uh, the wake approach to uh, flexible intubation on yourself.